Sarah. Hello and welcome to another episode of Analog Insights. In today's episode, my friend Jules and I review the Nikon F5. The F5 was manufactured by Nikon from 1996 through 2004. It was, as the name suggests, the fifth iteration in Nikon's professional camera line, which started with the Nikon F in 1959. The F5 followed on the F4 from 1988 and was replaced by the Nikon F6 later. At the time, the camera was a true breakthrough, um, which literally broke several records, um, for instance, um, for its uh, frames per second speed or its autofocus speed. The so-called 3D matrix light meter was also revolutionary at the time. Inspired by scenes from the Lost World Jurassic Park, which was filled with the latest high-tech of the time and also the Nikon F5, we are taking the Nikon F5 out on a tour to a dinosaur museum, um, which is about an hour away from Munich, shooting some Silversaz 35 um, scene film. So let's take a closer look at the camera and the creatures we encountered. The Nikon F5 was mostly directed at professionals and serious amateurs. It is ideal for more demanding professionals shooting sports or photojournalism, but also for scientific, industrial and, as in our case, uh, forensic applications. So due to its advanced 3D color matrix, the F5 is also particularly well suited for shooting landscape and nature. The F5 is rain and dust resistant thanks to its all-metal die-cast chassis and a moisture and dust-resistant exterior cover. It also came with the world's first self-diagnostic, self-adjusting shutter to provide um, a more reliable performance. The F5 was designed by the legendary Italian designer Giorgetto Giugiaro, who is interestingly most famous for designing automobiles, supercars and motorcycles. Um, so for instance, he designed the Volkswagen Golf 1 um, as one of his most um, famous uh, creations. But he also did prototypes for Apple, um, firearms for Beretta and a lot of Nikon cameras. So the Nikon F3, F4, F5 and F6 are all his creations, his designs. And interestingly, the red line on the front of the camera was introduced um, with the Nikon F3 and that can also be found here on the grip on the right side of the Nikon F5. Um, you can actually feel that connection to firearms when you uh, assemble or disassemble and reassemble the viewfinder on the F5 because it really feels like doing that on a firearm <laughs> and uh, it, there's no play at all and it wonderfully clicks into place. Um, yet the major downside of this camera is its weight uh, because even without a lens and any of the eight AA batteries it requires, it already weighs 1,210 gram. Is there an alternative to the F5, you might already wonder? Yes, there is, and we can point you at the F100, which is kind of the cheaper um, and uh, slightly smaller alternative to the F5, which uh, in some cases um, has plastic instead of metal as material and comes with a few um, less features. Um, so for instance, there's no mirror lockup and there is uh, no possibility to interchange the viewfinder. But other than that, it's a very similar camera if you're looking for an alternative.
The Nikon F5 shoots up to 8 frames per second, even with the automatic focus tracking and operation, which of course makes it ideal for shooting sports, for instance. Interestingly, there's hardly any recoil thanks to an internally isolated um, transport and an active mirror balancer, which reduces the overall camera shake. There are two different um, shutter release buttons, one for regular horizontal use and one for vertical shots. Um, the Nikon F5 comes with an electronically controlled um, shutter with speeds ranging from 30 seconds all the way up to 1 8,000th of a second. The shutter features a self-testing operation which measures the shutter speed each time it fires off and adjusts it if necessary. Um, the flash sync speed goes up all the way to 1 300th of a second, but according to some sources that I've read, um, it is recommended to use it at 1 250th of a second because here it just works more reliable and better. The ISO setting is either set automatically via the DX code on the film and then in a range between ISO 25 um, and ISO 5000 or alternatively, if your film does not have a DX code or you really want to push it all the way up, you can um, set the ISO manually between ISO 6 and um, 6400. So quite a range here. The F5, and that's a really important feature, comes with a 3D um, color matrix meter, which features um, a sensor with 1000 um, and five uh, pixels uh, of, of RGB um, sensor, basically, that reads the scene's color as well as its brightness and uh, contrast. And this made the built-in light meter one of the most advanced at the time. Alternatively, there's also a centered light meter in there um, that, uh, and the, the area, the field um, that it reads can be customized in the setting. Last but not least, there's also a, a spot meter um, which meters the light on uh, a manually selected area that is also the focus area. And personally, I like that um, feature the most to have the ability to say, okay, I wanna focus on that particular spot and please also take your spot meter reading from the very same location. And there are a lot of use cases where this is um, just ideal um, for combining focus and spot metering. Another really important highlight um, is the F5's autofocus capabilities. The five area sensor covers a particularly wide area of the viewfinder and the areas are indicated via um, pointer LEDs on the edges of the finder, which was of course really advanced at the time. And you can choose between two different modes, the fixed single area autofocus and Nikon's continuous dynamic tracking for moving subjects which was not just revolutionary at the time, but of course in combination with the eight frames per second made it really ideal for fast shooting as a journalist, for instance, um, during an event or um, doing sports photography um, from the side of a soccer field, um, for instance. So really advanced features um, with the autofocus, um, yeah, fast frame rate and 3D color uh, matrix metering. So what about the lenses? The Nikon F5 offers support for almost all lenses with the Nikon F bayonet since 1959. And that is of course really impressive, especially if you compare it to the competition um, like a Canon. Um, this means it is fully compatible with all the latest AF, AFD, AFI, AFS and um, VR and G lenses 
And it also works with all the AI lenses and newer manual focus lenses um, and every lens back to 1959 um, with at least some mechanical modifications. So this makes the camera an ideal add-on if you already have a digital Nikon system with lenses and just want to shoot some film occasionally. The only downside is that the matrix metering that I mentioned earlier does not work with manual focus lenses. Here you have to use um, either center weighted metering or spot metering. But other than that, um, it is fully compatible. Um, looking at the results here, you can also see that overall the Nikon lenses are just uh, really, really good. You get um, incredible sharpness, um, in most cases a really nice, beautiful bokeh. and. Um, great sharpness across the entire frame and hardly any corner fall off or vignetting. So overall, great lenses, um, an incredible choice and almost overwhelming choice of lenses out there um, if you buy into the Nikon F Bayonet system. So what are our personal impressions? The Nikon F5 feels powerful, reliable and smooth, yet it also feels rather heavy, oversized and a bit aggressive. For instance, it eats through eight AA batteries rather quickly. And then if that happens to you, um, it doesn't automatically rewind the film anymore, but you have to use or you can use the manual rewind that is actually part of the camera because of that use case, in case professionals need to rewind the film and ran out of batteries before that. Um, we also like that the viewfinder is interchangeable. That makes it very interesting. And because of all the um, applications this camera was made for in the past, like scientific or forensic applications, there are all sorts of different finders available. So for instance, a large view action finder, a waist level finder, and even a six times magnification finder, which can all can be very interesting if you're into that. Um, the amount of possible customization is also striking. There is a custom button hidden underneath a panel um, at the back of the camera that gives you access to 24 custom functions, so quite a bit. And um, these were, um, these, especially for professionals, these can be really interesting. The F5 also allows you to save EXIF data of your photographs. Um, so it basically records in a text file, if you want that, um, information such as um, the, the film ISO, the film number, the frame number, the aperture, the shutter speed, um, the metering mode and so on. And um, this info can then be read and synchronized with the scans um, via tools such as Meta35 if you're into that. So if, if you like uh, recording all the meta information of your um, film photograph, this is one of the cameras that supports EXIF data and lets you do that easily. Um, so overall, um, a great powerful tool, um, but it only makes sense if you really have the kind of professional application that it was originally created for, or if you just like or don't mind carrying such a big um, camera and have all these custom, um, potentially custom features and really advanced features at hand. So thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this somewhat different episode of Analog Insights and our review of the Nikon F5. 
If you did, please remember to um, leave us a comment in the comment section below and subscribe to our channel. Jules, Greg and I really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.